that. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I need... Right. Advanced audio properties. Not what? that. Yeah, I'll stream this. Why not? I like I like hanging out with friends. Change but, uh... my category, so... Great. That's Hi, Pig Hello, Jack. Pigs Chat. Great. So, so, so let's fix that. So my okay. microphone's on as well. They need more chips. I'll be right back. Ooh, chips. Bring some for chat. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I'm going to start streaming. Sure. I've started streaming. Technically, I guess. <laughs> Friends time. <gasps> it's time for friends. Friends, you say? Friends. <gasps> friends. Hi, Stitch. Yes, How are Wikipedia you? Articles. Stitch, that's such a cute emo. Ho, 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 ho. It's magic. Yep. Whoa, whoa. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deafen all you for a second to explain to my chat what we're doing. Because I don't think sure. I told them what I'm doing. So. My chat can figure it out in the VODs. Um, <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I normally have like five minutes before I actually go live, go live. So just know that that's what's happening now. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to hear the explanation twice then, but that's fine. My, my thing says I'm streaming Alien Isolation. That's wrong. Well, I mean, Alien Isolation could be one of the articles. Probably not yeah. a good choice. No, I think most people know that. Also, someone named Primal Tanuki followed me. Amazing. It's a fucking Thank rad you. name. Also, how are you, Stitch? I must know. I mean, I know you're cute, but apart from that. Ah, got him. just chatting i've never used this category before this is my first time as well last time i did this i put it under games and demos which is not accurate no i mean I it is a game technically it's a talking game though. but yeah the focus is the chatting but it's not but it's not a coding game or a what's it called or or a coding demo game. so yeah you it, know one of those coding it, it, it's it's not a video game no, it's not a video game. It's not even a board game. It's just... No. It's a lying game. You know. Like what liars do. Yeah. yeah. Lying is the funnest game of all, because it hurts everyone. <laughs> nice, Cahill. I need to take my headphones out. Juice! <gasps> Juice has arrived. Uh. This is the best timeline. Ah. Uh. Uh. That's hilarious. Why does Bubbles have such good emotes? Uh... Hmm, Juice, don't like yeah. that. Man, my computer's gonna overheat. Juice, to quote, is double fisting streams. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, as is as is normal. Oh yeah, I mean I, I'm I'm guilty of that myself. Hmm. No. Ju Juice is now gonna triple fist with Cahill. Amazing. We normally have four up, so. Um. That's about my capacity, the full audio and everything. I don't know how you keep track of that. Okay. Um, um, I usually just like have the streams open and then only participate in one. And you know, <laughs> yeah, it's my full audio in all four, and I try to participate in all four. <laughs> so, and yeah, it's you have to have the brain for it, I guess. So. I, I can't manage more than I can't manage more than one stream at a time. Wait, we're expected to have brain. This is the worst timeline. <laughs> oh, sweet lord! Also, I should, I guess, I should like bring. I, I wanted to have like a thing, but I guess I should bring up like a GIF. What are good GIFs? Um, what are good GIFs to look at for th all stream. There are several. There are several. Oh sweet lord! Uh, I'll just I'll just I'll just show my desktop. Oh, this is awful. Oh wait, I need Chrome up. Come back here, Chrome. 
But your desktop's not not safe not not safe for work. Right? No, my desktop is safe for work. I don't keep that stuff on. What was I thinking of? <laughs> so you confirm Everyone. that you have stuff. It's in a folder stuff. called taxes. Taxes, taxes, and finance. Should be in a folder I mean, called tax have... evasion. Let me see what folders can chat see. They can see I have <gasps> JPEG, backgrounds, personal work, animation, finished frames, and emotes. Ah, personal work. So that's where you keep it. No, personal work is everything that doesn't go for school. I can show that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to briefly deafen up so that I can say hi to chat, even though they can hear me right now. And then I'll come back and I'll share my screen through Discord as well, so that everybody's on the same track about how we're running this. Sound good? Sure. Okay. Cool. Hi, chat. How are you doing? Oh, Gold, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's the worst. Anyway, hi, chat. Um... Thank you for being here. Um, as as the title says, we're playing three of these people are lying, which is different to two of these people are lying because there's one more liar. Um, it is a Wikipedia-based game of uh, lying, bluffing, and guessing. And uh, I'm going to go through exactly how we're going to be doing it today, just to make sure everybody's on the same track. It will help the people who are playing and it will help the people who are watching. Hi, Rivers, how are you doing? Or, sorry, Crystal is, I think you're preferred. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna explain how that works in a moment. I'm gonna keep the music going in the background. I don't think it's too loud, but if it is, please just let me know. Um, there are also gonna be periods of downtime when I'm going to just, you know, show chat pictures of kittens and puppies. Because, why the heck wouldn't I? The people who aren't the host pick a Wikipedia article. You throw it in a thing. The host picks a Wikipedia article. They, everyone tries to convince them that they're the one who picked it. What Cahill and, said. Yeah, that. And There's now I've explained the rules. <laughs> so, now... Description. Yeah, now, now to explain it to, to my chat. Uh, basically... Oh. <laughs> Basically, in three of these people are lying, or two of these people are lying, you kind of need a minimum of four people to play, but five, six, I've done with as many as seven people, but that gets rough. I imagine so. Um, so, one person, it, to begin with me, is the guesser. Everyone other than the guesser chooses a random Wikipedia article, writes down its title. The guesser then chooses one of those at random. So everyone has chosen a different article, memorized parts of it, and the guesser chooses one of those at random, and everybody has to tell the guesser, me, in the first round, what that article is about, even though only one person has read it. So three of them will be lying, one will be telling the truth, but they're all trying to convince me that they're telling the truth. Um, if I pick the person who's telling the truth, I get a point, and they get a point. If I pick the person who... Uh, someone who is lying, only they get a point. Uh, we are going to keep track of points, but there's no point to the points. But I'm still going to keep track of them, uh, because why not? Uh, I get it. I, I got the joke. Cool. I did the thing. Kale did a smart! Oh. Um, okay, so I'm going to briefly uh, share my screen uh, in Discord as well. So that everybody can follow along exactly. Uh, so I shared a, uh, I shared a Google Docs image, this one over here, which we're going to be using to key uh, to keep track of this. What I'm going to do right now is clear out everything. I know some people pre-selected articles. We're not going to worry about that now because I want to go through this as if this is a brand new, completely empty document, which at this point it is. Um, someone wrote something here, and I'm just going to delete it quickly. There you go. Uh, and it looks like no one else has written anything. So, uh, when you start, we want to make sure that each person gets their own row. You, uh, I encourage you to choose a different row each time you do it, to make sure I can never just, like, go, okay, Cahill's in the third spot. When I tell you to choose an article... You claim one of these by putting a Y in it. 
That means that's mine. No one else choose that. Go to Wikipedia and use the random article uh, button to get a random article. Not all articles are good for this. So we go here. Scott Randolph, potentially a, uh, potentially a good one. Um, names of people are good. The only problem with someone like this is that he's a currently serving, or not currently, but he was a recently serving politician. A lot of people might already know who that is. So potentially not a great one. Um, something like this can be fascinating because there's a lot to lie about, but they're a bit weird. Uh, let's see if I can get, yeah, something like this. Great. Steve Madden is an English former professional rugby league footballer. So anybody can lie about who Steve Madden is. So you're looking for articles that have a fair amount of content to them, but are also potentially easy to lie about. Good name, unfortunately not enough content to really make a good article for lying or not lying. I'm trying to find a really bad one. Um, something like this is great. The, the name of any kind of media is fantastic because media you can do a lot with. Um, occasionally, while doing this, you'll come across... Normally I get it before this. Okay, things like this. This is a Croatian surname. The surname may refer to these people. Terrible article. Because... Eh, what, what do you even lie with? It's weird. Um, occasionally you'll, you'll come across ones that are just like, this is the scientific name of a beetle. And that's vaguely interesting, but it's hard to lie about or tell the truth about. Um, you, you, you'll get a feel for, uh, for it. Basically just, if you think someone could reasonably lie about the title, and there's a little bit of meat to the article, at least two or three paragraphs, it's probably great to use. You will have five minutes between each round to select an article, to memorize as much as you can, as much as you can about it. And then once I choose an article, I will give you 30 seconds to put your thoughts in order, one way or another, whether you're lying or telling the truth. Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm gonna be the first guesser. I don't know who uh, who anybody is, but if everybody is on the Wikipedia articles, which I hope they are, then I will start our five minute countdown. Weird. <laughs> um, and I will let you know when that finishes. So yeah, three, two, one. Select a, select a row, select an article, and start memorizing. You have five minutes left. Oh. Chat, so that you don't get bored. Um, also, hi, Zaid. <laughs> um, so that you don't get bored. Let's look at pictures of puppies. Oh god, these are too good. <laughs> You're gonna need that. God, look at him. Mm. Sweet lord. <laughs> oh. Oh, he do a munch! I did a goof already. Uh, incognito window. Go. Well, that's part of the reason I'm not. Uh, I'm not looking at the document at the moment, because it means that I can't see anybody's goofs. But also because pop time. Oh god. Pop time. Pop time. Oh dear. Pop time. Is it pop time? Look at that one. Oh, it's pop time. Gosh, just. He's just a teddy bear. Oh, you're just a boy. Hmm. A, lot, a this, solid lot. This one seems appropriate. It's the Wikipedia article for puppy. Amazing. <sighs> oh, good. It's too cute. Oh. Oh, it's perfect. I think this is a good way to pass the time. Look at that 
face. Very good pup wearing his face mask. You know, Zade, I think I would sniff out that lie. No. Is it lying in your chat? He said, a puppy is actually a fish. Thank you for coming to my lie talk. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, coming, thank you for coming to my pup talk. So, I'm not checking because I don't, I want to see any potential mistakes. Has everybody chosen an article? Yes. Yes. Good. Got it done. Uh, a guppy is a fish. I think. So many good pups. I think Guppy's just a name. Oh my He's god, funny. look at this one. Look at that. Just look, chat. What a good pup. I think this was the right decision. All in favor of, ca of canceling this stream and just doing three hours of looking at puppies. That is tempting. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. Good. You guys have fun. All right, chat. We'll get some more people back together and some more of <laughs> so Everybody's chosen an article, and appropriately, I can't see their titles. Um, yes. And you have a minute left, so make sure you memorize. Shit. Nice shot. Um. <gasps> oh. Oh. Look at those eyes. He do a munch. Mm. Good Don't so tell him you chat. <gasps> Did I, did I hear, did I hear Star doing a munch? Yeah, I mean, just beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful. Ten munch. seconds left. Okay. And whether or not you're ready, you're done. Okay. Um. So, let's get a random number between 1 and 4 to determine who I'm going with. I'm going with row number 3. Okay. The article is... Uh... Dri um... Drac... Drac... Anculiasis? Uh, I'm gonna briefly turn this... Um... I'm going to briefly highlight this so that everybody can read number three. Okay. I'm going to give us 30 seconds to put your thoughts in order, whether they be true or false. But I am certainly interested. I also have a document open in Notepad, so I can take notes because there's no way I'm remembering this. This is fair. What kind of an article is this? I'm so excited. And time is up. Uh, I'm gonna go alphabetical on this one. Ben, why don't you tell me about Dracunculiasis? Well, Dracunculiasis is uh, actually, ha it's sort of a, like, is when you sort of study like how Dracula is portrayed across various types of media like for example like uh the castlevania is a classic one you look at that and you uh sort of compare and contrast how that works in like sort of compared to i don't know um 
what's that other game realms of the haunting i think it is where it's like a point and click adventure game sure how you sort of compare like how they're portrayed like for like their weaknesses their strengths like how accurate they tend to be sure i like, compare that to twilight like hmm. i don't know um okay so i, I didn't ma mention this before um but when I, like, when I first ask you, you can just give me, like, a one-sentence summary. If I want more details, I'll come back to it. But that was, okay, that's certainly interesting. Um, Cahill, why didn't you tell me about Dracunculiasis? Okay, so Dracunculiasis is, it's called, it's known as, it's a parasite. And it, like, works its way through your system. I think it, you like uh get it through like drinking and eating stuff um and it's a and it's a worm that at one point uh burrows its way out of your skin and then you gotta then you gotta start spooling it out of you of your body cool that sounds horrifying eric yeah draconculiasis draconculiasis is a skin disease it's uh, named after, it makes your skin kind of scaly. It's named after a dragon. Okay. Works pretty well. Um, and Sar. Um, Dracanculiasis is actually a fungal infection. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to come straight back to that one. Can you give me a little bit more detail on the fungal infection? Oh, absolutely. So it's it's found in a lot of caves in like Peru, basically, right? The fungus in there tends to infect the local tribes and hmm. to develop this fungal infection called the Dracunculiasis. Okay. Um, ben, you gave me a lot of detail, so I'm I'm fairly satisfied with your answer. Cahill, gotcha, gotcha. is is there anything more you can tell me, or did you give me basically the full si life cycle as you remember it? I mean, as I remember it, it, I think it's called like guinea worm. Okay. And, and yes, and like it, you know, like I said, it's a parasite. It weaves throughout your system, and the only way to get it out without any kind of infection or, or you know thing is to slowly pull it out when it finally comes up for air out of your skin. Okay, so I hate that you just said that. Yes. Because guinea worm is a real thing. Yeah. And I know that. Oh, I know. So, um... <sighs> okay. I'm just gonna go with my gut instinct on this. Eric, I think it's you. Am I right? It is now. No. Dang it! Yay. Okay, so I don't get a point. Eric gets a point. Good job. Um, okay, so it's not Eric. Cahill, is it Guinea Worm? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, dang. The, the scaly skin like a dragon really, really got me. That's really yeah. disappointing because that was the exact lie that I was going to use. The exact lie I was going to use in the Eric was before me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. Cooler than Worm. The additional details I had was it was going to be caused by fungus and blah blah but like didn't even get to me that was gonna do the same thing oh yeah it's like the reason why it's called dracula is just because of dragons and scaly skin and <laughs> oh okay completely beat that the only other thing. was gonna be my lie and so Eric stole it so the only other detail i had was that it was gonna be very itchy caused by a bacteria with a very long name i don't remember and uh there was no cure you can only use oils and stuff to make it less bad okay uh, essential oils correct you never actually asked me anything again well i i mean i was Satisfied? I thought, like, yeah. I was satisfied because I thought I'd got it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear these out. I'm gonna try not to, uh, not to look too closely at any of them. Oh. We so now, in in the game that Tom Scott runs, they don't. Only the person who whose article it was picks a new one. Yes. Can we all pick a new one. Or um. With the one we have? So, since we since we've got the five minute timer, I would like everybody to pick a new one. Okay. Uh, it's, I know it's slightly different, but, um, let's, yeah. It's okay, I didn't want to talk about Sabina Carlson anyway. 
Cool. I was gonna talk about a I was gonna talk about a Maki I mean, you could keep it secret and then use it later. I mean, yeah, I want to do the thing right. Well, you could, well, well. but yeah, go get your new articles. You have five minutes. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm gonna look at kittens. Do it. Kittens this time. Erase the thing of guinea worm from your head. Oh, I'm just. Ugh. I wasn't sure how that game worked, and I didn't want to sweep it because I, 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 I'm very knowledgeable about that parasite. So, like, I was trying to be kind of vague while also knowing everything I know to be true about it. So. So now go choose yourself a random though. article, Smarty Pants. I will. God, look at these kittens. Hi, Zach. We're looking at pictures of kittens while other people get stressed out and try to memorize random articles. I mean, I'm not stressed. I'm chilling. You will be stressed. Ugh. No. Just wait until you're I'm the one guessing. Relaxed people I know. I have anxiety, but I try to remain relaxed. Ooh. It's a cold. No. That's the one. Reddit's illegally small cats. Oh god. I'm debating if that's a good or bad subreddit. It's amazing. It has a legal in the name. Well, it has a legal in the name. I know Reddit you used to have watch people die so yeah reddit now has people yeah. fucking dying which is just insanely exaggerated and i love it no they've had that no i know but people fucking oh. dying is amazing okay so that's a different one better <laughs> hopefully oh i can't remember look at the they Uh, sure, Juice. Feel free to post that. Juice has a multi-link. What the heck? Do you, though? <laughs> yes. Do you have a multi-link? They just posted oh, it. Let me, go to my box too, so you can... let me let me look. Oh, wait. No. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in BC so everybody can get a hold of it. Do other people have their Wikipedia articles up on screen? Because if so... <laughs> That that's uh, fine. It's oh, yeah, you're right. well, it, as it, long it, as you're not watching each other's stream, it's okay. Yeah. No, frankly, it, that's also fine playing. as long as you're not participating. Like I can't watch your guys' streams, and I don't uh, plan to. Oh like, wow! I see how it is. You don't ever want to watch my stream. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, I I realized that would be misinterpreted the second it came out of my mouth. Well, <laughs> um, you should have thought a bit harder. Yeah. So. Uh, so something that, that Zade is mentioning, you don't need to put the article URL, just the title. Um, and uh, what, one thing that you can that you can do, some especially like when it comes to animals, sometimes an animal will have like more than one name. Um, birds especially will like have like a common name and a more official name. You can use either of those titles. Okay. Um, so the the example from the uh, from the actual game, the the article is the colored bush robin being a bird, but what was written down was its other name, which is Johnston's robin. Um, they're both they're both perfectly acceptable because it is still the title of the article. I'm just spending time with chat looking at real tiny kittens. The time. How tiny are we talking? Uh, well, they're officially illegally small. Oh, uh, nice. Although there are 30 seconds left. Okay. He may be hiding in a speaker. Um, 15 seconds left. Memorize them articles. 
Just one more detail could make the difference. I have all the details I need. A and stop. Okay. Uh, so now I will be choosing number four. Okay. Um, and I am actually going to choose a new one. Number four is the Great Molasses Flood, which I know about. Um, it is a great choice of article, but since I know about it, I'm not going to choose it because that seems super unfair. But what if I wanted to hear about the Great Molasses Flood? <laughs> then go to Wikipedia, you... That sounds like a lot of work. Um, it... Okay. Um... I, I'm assuming this is correct. Colliding L7. Um, I think those two are combined. Yeah. Okay, I agree. Somebody take my box. Uh oh. Who didn't claim a box? Well, choose either colliding or L7, and then we cool. can decide afterwards. Um, okay. For the sake of the slightly weirder, uh, being the slightly weirder of the two, I'm going to choose L7. Okay. You have 30 seconds to get your thoughts in order. I'll do what I want. <laughs> I'm reading a comic book. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Is it the Thor one you got? Yes. It's, it has cool art. And it has cool writing. Cool. So, I, I got a lot. I also got an omnibus of Batman comic book. I don't know how many pages it is. It's thicker than my Bible. Uh, and time is up. And since he's so okay. confident, Cahill, why don't you tell me about L7? Okay. So L7 is a model of plane developed in about the 1970s. Not by like Boeing. Uh, I forget which one it was because fucking two, who knows other airport companies other than Boeing. But um, it's a sleeker model of passenger plane, a bit smaller. Uh, it, it was doing okay until it had like this fatal, fatal flaw in the design, which ended up having the wings rip off on it before it could reach maximum speed. So it kind of got trashed before. That doesn't sound like doing make... fine, but I mean, well, no, that that's a, that's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's not my fault. Blame the designer. <laughs> yes. But, no, that, that but... that's enough detail for now. I'll come back okay. to you if I need more. Uh, Sar. Sar, what is L seven? L seven is a contemporary pop in from the nineteen seventies. Ooh. I will definitely be asking more detail on that. Ben, L7. Uh, kind of similar to what Sar said, though. They, uh, they're a punk band from Detroit. Nice. Okay, and Eric. L7 is a colloquial name for a short road in Louisiana. Uh, interesting. One of these things is not like the other. But that doesn't mean it's wrong or right. The other. <laughs> um, Dale, you you had more details about this plane. Yeah, I mean, it was just because it was like more because I said it failed. It was just more of a prototype, if anything, you know, kind of like Apollo's one through thirteen. It was just the mark number given to a certain design of plane before they moved on to the next sure. rendition. Um. Eric, is there anything interesting about this road other than it's a short road in, Louis in Louisiana with a colloquial name? But it's seven miles long, that's where I got the name from. Ah, okay. Nothing more about it, just... Not really. No. Okay. I mean, you get those articles, that's what Wikipedia is yeah, about. It was, it was a very short one and I was kind of running out of time. Sure. Uh, Ben, tell me a little bit more about this punk band. So, um... They're out of Detroit, like I said. They weren't very successful. They only had a, they only had really one album. It was all, it was self-titled L7. Uh, 
you'd think it'd have seven songs on it, but no, they're, they're only three. But that was the only album they ever made. They didn't last very long. I mean, I can sort of see why. Um, but, I mean, again, there are a million bands like that. Um, Sar, our 1970s pop band. Yep. Can you give me some more details? Well, what would you like to know about them? Um, albums, touring, members, anything that stood out to you from the article. I don't remember the name of their album, unfortunately, but their most well-known song was a song called Looking at Me, Looking at You. Okay. Um, you said they were from the 1970s. Are they still going at all? Uh, no, th there's like some weird tribute bands out there for it. You know, okay. Like I8 and stuff, but it looks like they stopped touring shortly afterwards, kind of broke up and stuff. So. Um, I... I don't think it's Cahill. I don't think it's Damn Eric. it. Um, I think... I think... I think this is SARS 1970s pop band. Am I right? You are wrong. Dang it. Yeah. Okay, so so SAR gets dang it. Um, I believed it was SAR until you said the I eight thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there are there are some dumb tribute band names. There are. Um yeah, okay. So for me for me it's between Ben and Eric. Ben, is it you? It is. Wow. I I actually thought your one band with that uh, one album with three songs was a little bit too much of an exaggeration, but turns out life is exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. Like an LP than an album, though. Like, yeah, it was a three-song EP. Oh, okay. Still, though, that's very short. Yeah. I um, believe mine at all? In a little bit. <laughs> um. I I would have. Except for the fact that seven is written out. If it were L if the if it were the digit seven, then very possibly I would have gone with yours. Okay. I that, had absolutely nothing. I made that up in five seconds before you asked me. I mean I I'm I'm second, impressed. My brain went nowhere. <laughs> I'm impressed. That is a very good lie in that time. Um how about we change who's guessing this time? Okay. Um Cahill, you seemed very, very confident. Do you want to yeah. be the next guesser? I'll guess. Or would someone else like to? I mean, I'll step aside if someone else wants to, but I'm also good to go. So it is I'll, up uh, to y'all. I'll, uh, I'll do it after Cahill. Perfect. We have a line. Um, okay. Everybody, okay. I claim your lines. I'm going to read about the Great Molasses Flood. Yeah. Um, so basically what it was, right, was a couple giant storage baths broken, like an entire town got covered, and it took them, like, weeks. Yeah. Specifically like, Boston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, I know the story, so it's not good for this, but it's a great story. Uh, let's let's get our timer going. Um, does someone else want to handle the, handle the time, or shall I keep doing it? If you have one set up, you might as well. Sure. Unless... Yeah. That's not cool. going to get in your way. While you machine. Well, we've got uh, we've got five minutes. Chat. Unfortunately, no more kittens and puppies because I've got to find an article. Ah, uh, boo. Um. The... Ahem. The did Great did Molasses that. Flood, also known as Boston Molasses Disaster. What? Wow. The Great Boston Molasses Flood occurred on January fifteenth, nineteen nineteen. <laughs> in the North End neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts. A large storage tank filled with 2.3 million U.S. gallons, 8,700 milliliters, weighing approximately 13,000 short tons of molasses burst when a resultant wave of molasses rushed through the streets at an estimated 35 miles per hour, killing 21 people and injuring 150. The event entered local folklore and the residents claimed for decades afterwards that the that the area still smelled of molasses on a hot summer day. The disaster occurred at the Purity Distilling Company facility at 529 Commercial Street near Kiani Square. I don't know if I'm saying that way. Who cares? But molasses can be fermented to produce ethanol. The active Juice. ingredient I'm sure, I'm sure in alcohol. So the people beverages. who live off that square would be offended by the fact that you can't read their square, right? Juice. <laughs> Juice. Name your sheep. Sheep. 
sheep. Wait, did you get a sheep? I'm assuming in Stardew Valley. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> I'm upset. You can buy a sheep from Greg. Greg has real sheep. Wait, Greg really? Real sheep. Yes, Greg has real sheep. That's rad. Oh, wait, I'm not doing this. Sorry. Greg also has a lot of Pokemon. He's just an animal <laughs> person. Purity used the Harborside Commercial Street tank to offload molasses from ships and store it for later by pipeline to the Purity ethanol plant situated between Willow Street and Evertees Way in Cambridge. Mm. The molasses tank stood 50 feet tall, 90 feet in diameter, and contained as much as 2.3 million U.S. gallons. On January 15, 1919, the temperature had risen to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, climbing rapidly from the frigid temperatures of the preceding day. The previous day, a ship had delivered to a fresh load of molasses, which had warmed to reduce its viscosity for transfer. Possibly due to the thermal expansion of the older cold molasses inside, the tank burst open and collapsed at approximately 12.30 p.m. Witnesses report that they felt the ground shake and heard a war as it collapsed. A long rumble similar to the passing of an elevated train Others reported a tremendous crashing, a deep growling, a thunderous-like bang, and a machine gun-like sound as the rivets shot out of the tank. Molasses' density is about 1.4 tons per cubic meter, 40% more dense than water, so it had a great deal of potential energy. The collapse translated this energy to, into a wave of molasses 25 feet uh, high at its peak, moving at 35 miles per hour. The wave was sufficient forced to drive steel panels of the burst tank against girders of the adjacent Boston Elevated Railway's Atlantic Avenue structure and tip a streetcar momentarily off the L's track. Stefan Puello describes how nearby buildings were swept off their foundations and crashed. Several blocks were flooded to a depth of two to three feet. Puello quotes Boston Post report, Molasses, waist deep, covered the street and swirled and bubbled about the wreckage. Here and there struggled a form where it was an animal or human being was impossible to tell. Only an upheaval, a thrashing about in the sticky mess. One minute left. Life. Horses died like so many flies on sticky flypaper. The more they struggled, the deeper in the mess they were ensnared. Human beings, men and women, suffered likewise. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier, I'm sure you guys have, be, have been doing it, but... Um, Obviously, don't just read from your article if it's your article. I've been trying to like take look, take little notes on myself to help me remember it better. Yeah, yeah that, that, that that's fine. I've been yeah. reading it through a mirror to fuck myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Super hard. My articles are from the mirror dimension. <gasps> hmm. Could it be now? And time is up now. Okay, Cahill. Oh yeah. I choose choose it. one of these. Someone didn't claim a, a row again. Oh. Great. Uh, I think two places are doubled up. Spike Breakwell. I can't tell if that's one or two. Pacific um, Core. Don't, don't, don't look at all of them. Oh, sorry. Just, well, just choose one at random. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll choose Spike, Spike Breakwell. Okay, for the sake of chat, I'm just going to, or well, for the sake of everyone, I'm just going to highlight that so that we can actually see it. Okay. Okay, everybody, you have 30 seconds to put your thoughts in order. Uh, Juice, you can, you can get a sheep in the city, depending on where you live. Uh, in, in the book that Blade Runner is uh, based on. Um, they they have farm animals living on the on the roofs of their apartment buildings. Beautiful. It's actually super rad. Looks better than the movie, and I only say that because I think the movie sucks. Really? Yeah, I kind of hated it. Damn. Okay, time is up. Okay. Dance for me, monkeys. Dance. Well, which monkey in which order? Pig, you go first. You never get a break. Okay. 
Uh, Spike Breakwell is a uh, a British comedian. You want more details now or later? Yes. No. Go on. Okay. Yeah, go on. Um, he was uh, in 1992. Uh, he was the first wheelchair-bound comedian to kind of break into the alternative circuit. Um, he was left disabled um, as a child, as bizarrely, from the polio vaccine, um, which also put him into a coma for, I think it said, two weeks. Um, and uh, he... he he, he has a famous opening line for his set, which is, I don't know what I've been drinking, but I could walk half an hour ago. Um, and there, there, there weren't a ton, a ton of more details, but yeah. So he's a British wheelchair bound comedian. Okay. Uh, Sargoda, you go next. I mean, I, I can understand why you would think it's a name. Cause it kind of sounds like Spike and Rick well being first name surname kind of situation but actually what it is is a device that's used specifically like you know there was a kind of a epidemic right um throughout the americas in, into the you know the 1900s where wells were being left places right that were mm -hmm. open and stuff like that like timmy and the well situations and stuff like that right so mm -hmm. to prevent those sorts of things from happening further right this company designed this tool which is the spike break well and it's designed to shove between the various pieces of like traditional brick wells, right? And then you basically put a sledgehammer on the other side of it and it breaks the well up and knocks the brick down in there, effectively closing the hole and preventing children from falling into it. Okay, so it's not Sargodo. Aroch, you try. Uh, Spike Brickwell is an American stuntman in Indianapolis. His main claim to fame is that he was never actually hurt during a shoot. You know, stunt, stunt work is actually very dangerous. Um, he was his sons for like 22 years and he actually died of lung cancer in 2002. Okay. Uh, and Brent, and Brent, you, your last. Go on. Alrighty. Uh, so, Spike is actually a folk singer. It's from Idaho. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's uh, his most famous song is, uh, not really folk sounding, but like the title is called I Love Loving Love. Very nice. He also actually did a folk cover of Weird Al's Albuquerque. Good song, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if a folk version is that really gonna be that good. I need to no. hear that. <laughs> wait, wait, whether whether what you're saying is true or false, I, I need to hear that. I want yours to be mm -hmm. true. I mean, I, I really want to hear it too. I'll have to, I'll have to watch watch if it's on youtube and uh unfortunately he died in 94 so did any other covers won't really be able to hear them sadly mm. okay either it's a really ridiculous article or ben and sargoda were lying <laughs> so... i want to go with Arock. i feel like he gave me the most details i was not correct that was a total lie oh my goodness who was it you gotta keep guessing Oh, I do? Pig? Yeah. Correct. Yay. I should have gone with my first instinct. Okay. And I just and I just want you to know that uh, if, the, if this person that doesn't exist died in 1994, he could not have covered Weird Al's Albuquerque. That came out in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Damn. A fatal flaw. Okay. So, so I am going to say, Sar, oh my god, it was my article and you nearly convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> No, sorry, uh, didn't convince me because he because he went with the root of like, well, you're, you're valid for thinking it's a name, and I was like, okay, well, this is already a bad start, and it's like it's actually a spike that breaks wells, and I was like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, he, here's the thing, I can tell you from the do that. I can tell you from the previous time I played with Sar, that's just how he explains things. Absolutely. He, yeah. he, like when it's when it's true, when it's his article. He'll still explain it like that. Just so, like that. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's valid. But when he got to the fact that it was once again a spike that breaks Break well, well, I was like, "No, we can't do this. We can't." <laughs> Over. I, it's not Sargodo. Moving on. I really wish uh, I had done that because that would have been. I mean, agreed. It would have made me look stupid, but. Okay. Uh, um. 
So, five minutes, Cahill, you'll be doing it again. Okay. Um, I want to give everybody at least, like, two... Uh, at least two shots at Guesser, depending on how long that takes. We might give uh, more rounds, whatever. Uh, but yeah, let's start. Please, everyone, remember to claim your row this time to make sure we don't have double ups. That was me last time, sorry. We all make mistakes. Allow me to read you a different one. Speaking one I won't things. use because I, I'm pretty sure most people know about it. Ah, uh, yes, a classic story. We, a we, classic we've, story. we've still only got three claimed rows. I, I didn't do it. Ahem. The Emu War, also known as the yes. Great Emu War. Yes! The new yes. wildlife management military operation undertaken in Australia over the latter part of 1932 to address public concern of the number of emus that would be running among in the Camp Campion Gold Would Kill Me district of Western Australia. The unsuccessful attempt to curb the population of emus, a large flight list of indigenous to Australia, employed soldiers armed in with Lewis guns leading the media to adopt the name emu more when referring to the incident while a number of the birds were killed the emu population persisted and continued to cause crop destruction <laughs> following world war one large numbers of discharged veterans who served in the war were given land by australian government to take up farming within western australia often in agriculturally marginal areas with the onset of the Great Depression in 1929, these farmers were encouraged to increase their wheat crops, the government promising and failing to deliver assistance in the form of subs subsidies. Government words. In spite of the recommendation and the promised subsidies, wheat prices continued to fall. And by October 1932, matters were becoming intense. The farmers preparing to harvest the season's crop while simultaneously threatening to reduce to deliver the wheat. The difficulties facing farmers were increased by the arrival of as many as 20,000 emus. The emus regularly migrate after their breeding season, heading to the coast from the inland region. With the cleared land and additional water supplies being made available for livestock by Western Australian farmers, the emus found that cultivated lands were a good habitat, and they began to foray for... Who wrote this fucking article? Began to foray <laughs> into farm territory in particular marginal farming land around Chandler and Walgulan. Holy fuck, Australia. <laughs> uh, Pig, also, if you if you don't mind, maybe if I get another round, would you mind if we do one more, uh, if we do a little twist on this game? Sure. So you know how we're using Wikipedia right now? We are we are not using Wikipedia. Wikipedia. I said wiki. I know. Oh, I I'm know. just telling you ahead of time. We're not changing to Wikipedia. No, not Wikipedia. <laughs> There's but it, there is a different wiki that I am knowledgeable of and I would love to see if you guys could convince me that one of these entries is a different thing. We're not doing the Naruto wiki either. <laughs> I I don't know anything about Naruto. I was going to say the SCP wiki. Finding oh. random SCPs. That might actually be an, in, an interesting one towards the end. Yeah, yes. that might be fun. So, yes, I just came up with that as I was reading the Emu War. Because I was like, I don't know a lot about these, but I know a lot about SCPs. So. <laughs> My priorities are correct. Yes. My righteous fury shall go. Okay. The Emus consumed and spoiled the crops, as well as leaving their large gaps in the fence where rabbits could enter and cause further problems. Oh no, the rabbits were in on it. Farmers relayed oh, no. their concerns about the birds ravaging their crops and a deputation of ex oh, a deputation of ex soldiers were sent to meet with the Minister of Defense, Sir George Pierce. Having served in World War One, the soldier settlers were well aware of the effectiveness of machine guns. <laughs> and <they requested> their <laughs> That's, kill, that's a great sentence. Kill to kill like any of them is ridiculous. Yeah. The minister readily agreed, although with conditions attached, the guns were to be used by military personnel. Troop transport was to be financed by Western Australian government, and the farmers would provide food, accommodation, and payment for the ammunition. The war, military involvement. Ah, uh, there's about twenty seconds left. 
Okay, well, I'll finish this up. To begin October 1932, the war was conducted under the command of Major GPW Meredith of the 7th Heavy Battery of the Royal Australian Military, with Meredith commanding soldiers Sergeant S. McCurry and Gunner J. O'Halloran, armed with two Lewis guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. The operation was Holy delayed, shit. however, by a period of rainfall. Uh, that's our time. So everybody should be ready. Let, um, whether or not you've marked yourself as ready, you are ready at this point. Um, so Cahill, choose a random number. Okay. I'll choose a different one. This one. No, not that one. Uh, <laughs> the, the... Okay, yeah. I'll do this one. At, okay, Maxim Shabalin. Wait, did you choose one and then unchoose it because you didn't like it? Okay, Jeez. to be fair, the first one is WMKT. Do y'all want to guess what's WMKT? Wait, wait, we'll let, we'll let Cahill off on this one. Yeah. So, 30 seconds oh, to put your thoughts in order. We could have an entire down dedicated to just figuring out what WMKT means. It's probably a radio station. But... I want to hear about Maxim Shabalin, Timothy Chalamet, Emu War. We raged on the Emu. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized there are people in my chat. Hold on. So, okay, okay, and that is your 30 seconds. Sweet. Uh, I'll go in the opposite order. Bent. Tell me about Will Willem. What's Willem his Defoe? name? Maxim Shabalin. I got it totally wrong. There you <laughs> go. Uh, are we doing the short summary or just the whole thing? Give me like one or two sentences of details. All right. Uh, Maxim Shabalin is a circus ringleader, and he uh, he ran a circus act called the Falling Circus. You know, sort of play on the Monty Python's Flying Circus, but you know. Okay, Aarok, yours. Uh, he's a Russian Olympic athlete. He competes in track and field, specifically the shot put. Um, com he competed in 2000 and 2004. Never won anything. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Sargoto. All right, so Maxim Shabalin, believe it or not, is not a person. Damn it, Sargoto. <laughs> created during the colonial time. <laughs> break up wells. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, Sar! No school that actually exists like this. And he's gonna keep guessing until he's got it right. But Pig, your turn. Um, Ma uh, Maxim Shabalin. Uh, Eric was actually like nearly right on the money here. Um, Maxim Shabalin is. Uh, he's certainly competed in the Olympics. He is a former competitive ice dancer. Uh, he is Russian, unsurprisingly. Um, he no longer competes due to a knee injury. What's the girl's name? Who got her knee busted up when someone hired a bodyguard? I, 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 I can't um, remember. I looked through the article. It does not seem to be related to this one. Okay. Anya, Anya Harding is the one that did the... Yes. Yeah. And she got a movie, which is wild. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, so it's definitely between Aroch and Pig. Because Sargoto made a funny, which we all enjoy, but it's not the <laughs> It might be. Talk about the WMKT that I actually prepared for. Uh, okay. No, actually, yeah. Yeah, tell, tell, tell us about that real quick before I make my decision, because I no, do want to hear about that. No, that, that's really. There was a talk radio station out of Michigan. That's like literally all it was. Today. Okay, so I would have got that right. I'm like it's a radio station. Anyway, um, but which radio station would it have been? Michigan, apparently. Really funny one, right? Yeah, we we yes. we could all have said something. I'm sure. Yes. Um. I'm so here's the, what's fucking me up. It's either Air. It's either Eric made a really good guess, and Pig made it, or Eric has it and. Pig piggybacked off of that, mm. or mm. or Ben? No, I don't believe Ben. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't like the circus ringleader? No, I don't believe that's a thing. Hmm. Circuses have ringleaders. I'm gonna go with Pig. I feel like Pig wouldn't just piggyback off of someone. 
A, yes I would. B, shockingly you're alright. Yay! Hey, I did it. Yeah. I'm oh. sorry. The, when you said ringle circus ringleader, I was like, hmm. Circuses have ringleaders. But 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 the circus was a front for money laundering. Uh, oh, you know what? If right. if you'd added that in, it might have been. Yeah, if you had been like he was someone who used the circus for money laundering, I would have been uh, like, hmm, dang interesting, it. possibly. Okay, so I've had two goes. Cahill has had two goes. Who wanted to go next? Was it Eric? Uh, no, okay, who was I, it? I or I, I'm good or not if Ben wants to do it. I don't care. Okay. Sure. Ben, ben why don't you take these, this next round as guesser? Okie dokie. So I'm just going to clear out the... Okay, Get rid of all that. It's been me so far almost every time forgetting to be ready. That's fine. Sar we we all Sargoto. screw up. Sargoto. Sargoto, look Sargoto. at me. Look at me in the eyes. All right. Okay? All right. No matter what it is, even if it's true, <laughs> you can't have it be something as well, okay? <laughs> okay, here, I hope, Sargoto, just click random until you fucking find that tool. Something with a well. Yes, yeah, something uh, okay. with a well. Everybody claim your row. Um, okay. and we, bottom, I guess. uh, we don't, Cahill! What? <laughs> Oh damn it! Everyone, <laughs> everyone switch it up. Everyone, right, everyone, right, unclaim, right, right. unclaim right, right, their right, row. All right, all right, all right. I'm unclaiming it. <laughs> okay. Ready? Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. Every okay. now everybody <laughs> claim a row. Don't say <laughs> which row it is. <laughs> okay. Fifth. Fifth row. Yeah, that's that's fine. Looking pretty good right now. Okay, and we have five minutes. All right. I'm probably gonna use this one to go to the bathroom at some point. Too. That's fine. A, that's a hell of a name. What? Jesus Alberto Capella Ibarra. I fucked up. I just have the thing. I don't know how to unfuck it up. What thing and how did you fuck up? I I linked it and it didn't do right. I, I don't know the words you're saying? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Never mind. Deleted. You know what? I'll just... Yeah, no. I... I forgot how games work. <laughs> okay, I did. I did good. I forgot we weren't actually going to the Wikipedia articles, and I ended up showing a link, so... I think Wrong I did that one. Wrong one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll admit, Pig, it's a, it is a fun party game. Mm -hmm. it got us there. But also, at the same time, I was just... Uh, it, it can also be finicky. It... So. It can. It does work better, like, in person. person. Yeah. You can actually put stuff on cards. And 2017 to 2018 more. Toronto Raptor season. Yeah, that's a fucking article. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder what that could be. Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Timothy Shapley. Yeah. Yes. You can't prove I did it. The mysterious case of my badness. <laughs> Got about three minutes left. Also, shout out to J. Rod, the completioner. Yes. His birthday. Oh yeah. He's. 10 times my size, and no, more like 10,000 times my size internet wise. But I was about to say, like in real life, or <laughs> no, I mean, he could be both. I've never met the guy, he's a big dude, but I don't think 10,000 size. 10, I... Times another I, I don't know, maybe he's a kaiju. Uh, you, you know, he could be probably done that in one of the intros for the show. If oh. not, he should. Ugh. Alright, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me, Kelhill? Did I just I'm not. Gerard the Finishist? Gerard the Completioner? That's his porn name. What? <laughs> 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 I just can't finish! <laughs> <laughs> Never this is what K 
Cahill meant by he's 10,000 times my size. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. I know when I'm beat. Got just a little more than a minute left. I've got mine. I am smart. Juice, maybe you shouldn't have a multi stream open if there's too much going on. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is avoidable. Just you, just my th you just seen three of everything. <laughs> you just my, my, uh, my tree turned back on by my Santa Claus, so I'm good. <sighs> Honestly, we should all just leave our Christmas trees. They look pretty no matter what kind of year it is. Why did my goal not fix itself when I fixed my goal? It's stupid. I've noticed goals in, especially if you're using Streamlabs, are real fiddly. About 10 seconds left. And that's our five minutes. Okay. Um, ben, you're the guesser, right? Yes, I am. Okay, choose a random number. And... I'm going to go with number two. Okay, I'm just going to highlight that for everyone to see. Um, and... So, is that correct as is? It... H trepanning or just... Uh, well, what, what, what I'm going to say, I'm going to unhighlight it. Okay. I'm going to let... Let's just let whoever it was... If they need to, update that. We still don't know who it was, which is ideal, but if somebody wants to update the title, this would be a good opportunity to do so. Um, I'm going to, again, obviously you can't say when you're okay. done because that'll give it away. So I'm going to do like a 10 second countdown, five second countdown, whatever. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, they were shy. Okay, it <laughs> appears to have been just Trapanic. Okay. All right. Um, first, I'm going to go to Sargoto. Tell me how this is related to Wells. Well, they have 30 seconds or whatever for yeah, let, let's, let's just give ourselves uh, 30 seconds for getting stuff in order. No, I we should let Sargoto talk about that. Wells. <laughs> <laughs> I have something to bring up after this, but I'll do it after the round. I mean, I really cool. want to talk to you guys about wet standpipes. Like wet standpipes? I'm very confused. <laughs> it's a joke from Better Call Saul. Oh, which I've never oh. seen. The show, yeah, no, I was about to say, the show I haven't seen. Oh, it's so good. And that's our 30 I seconds. Think hearing Breaking Bad is like the best, uh... but I'm not super into like that kind of story where it's like, ready to be depressed? <laughs> like, uh oh. Yeah, uh, Better Call Saul is much funnier than. Okay, okay we've know. had our 30 seconds. Ben? Got a yep. buddy to, to talk about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul the next. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to tell me about Wells. Uh, well, <laughs> it's related not a, trepanning. Well, it's, it's not about Wells, but trepanning is a um, specific style of panning for gold within, like, um, it was invented in, like, the Yukon Territories, right, in Canada, um, where basically you cut, like, a side channel into the river and then use, you know, certain nets and stuff like that to try to catch gold black so you can see if there's gold upstream from where you are. Hmm. I see. Um, how about pig next? Tell me. Uh, so trepanning is kind of an ancient medical practice, uh, which is largely related to, uh, to bloodletting. Uh, basically to get, uh, to get bad thing, bad things out of your system, um, you, uh, you, you cut into somebody, you let the quote-unquote bad blood drain out, um, which, of course, d 
didn't work, but like a lot of weird old things, um, modern medicine has found one or two applications where it can be useful. Alrighty. Um, Eric. I have a style of folk, a style of folk dance from Finland. Folk dancing. Anything else you can tell me about it, or is it just folk dancing? It's try it's one of the things that the, the Sami people do. It's mm. a certain movement that they have. All right, Kale, tell me. Last one. Okay, so either Pig know, Pig kind of knows about the article I picked, or uh, he's really close to guessing. Tre trepanning or trepanation is the old medical practice of basically drilling a hole in someone's head and then leaving it open. They used to use it for things like headaches and uh, just general head illnesses when they didn't know what those are. And it, it and whereas Pig was saying it's kind of used now, it's it's not really used now at all. You do not drill holes in people's heads to make them better. All right. <clears throat> so the thing I'm thinking about with pigs is that I have heard of that procedure. I'm almost certain I have, unless it's a Mandela effect. Um gaslighting. <laughs> maybe. Um Sargotos is uh I feel like it's a bit like I see the word panning. I'm gonna go for panning for gold. I Look, don't know. if it's not well related and I'm talking about it, it can't be true. I see how it is. Hmm. Look, he I, I... he only <laughs> lies about wells. This has been established. It's been uh, well yeah. established. Hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> the the drilling through the head thing that does sound something like something old doctors would be like. Hey, maybe drill through the head. That'll help get the get the headache out. Um, I think I think I'm gonna go for pig on this one. Are you? Am I correct or am I wrong? Very wrong. You are wrong. Dang it! All right. Uh, dare I ask? Is it the dancing? It's not. All right. Are we drilling through people's heads today? Yes. Ah. God, I wish it. I wish you'd gone for Sar. <laughs> that would have been funny. Um, bring up is that I know what trepanning is, and so do it's very I. Difficult to come up with why that wasn't the same thing. And so what? What? What I did was, I I knew enough about it to say something similar, but not to step on Cahill's toes. Right. I don't. Know that I'd be good at that. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, got, I was thinking, so he's like, drilling through someone's head does sound like something they would do, but I wasn't sure. If and I did do for true. several thousand years. Yeah. Wow. It, it was it, it, what the the, per, the main purpose of it is. They thought it would relieve pressure. Wow. All right. Cool. Uh, um, yeah, I made up that book dance. Oh, fuck. I, I I'm impressed. Oh, no. I'm impressed. I like that one. Uh, I, I stole that mostly from the original show. Mm. And yet it worked. On the river and stuff. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, let's, let's pick a couple more articles. Ooh. Okay. That one's flowing onto two pages. That's always fun. Uh, okay. Let's get our five minute timer again. Everybody claim a row. Uh, I'm taking row 18. Oh, but I need to think of one. I want um, 69. 69. You know what, that's a, that's a very good choice. Uh, everybody claim a row, our five minutes has started. Let's, let's find some shit. We've only got two rows claimed. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of one. What? No, I'm not. I'm not choosing that. I'm tempted. Could do this just for gold. I'm 
Should go over the bridge. Okay, no, yeah, this one. Absolutely this one. I wish this article was longer. I wish pig was longer. Uh, oh. Well, I am long pig. L long Fuck pig. it, I'm doing this. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, never mind. Uh, got about three minutes left. Dig, y'all, no, you're cute. How dare? Yes, okay. Silence is deafening. Well, everybody's people are thinking. Everybody's memorizing stuff. You can memorize all you want, but all I hear is a bunch of twiddling your thumbs. How oh, dare? Two minutes left. Could not believe my eyes and 12 million fire eyes. Wait, it's 12 million? 12 million. Does it really matter how many? At one point, it's just ridiculous, anyways, right? <laughs> There's not that many fire wires. Duh. There are probably many more. So many fireflies. One minute. I'll be right back real quick. Got to check okay. out something? No problem. Well, I suppose the only thing to do is loot his corpse for resources and throw him to the sharks. Yeah, that's fair. That is the way. This is the way. Uh, no, stop. No, stop. Don't be dumb. You. But it's a great show. Trash pandas are adorable. They truly are. And that is five minutes. Okay. Um. Now we. What was it? Was it who? Who left? I'm bad at voices. Left. That is the guesser, so yes. I have to wait for a second. So that's fine. How was everybody's day? I returned. <gasps> oh. Ben, you returned to us at Yay. pretty much exactly the right time. Awesome. It's, it's time for you to choose a random number between one and four. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Um, I'm thinking row four sounds pretty good. Okay. Let's see. I'm just going to highlight that for chat to see it more clearly. Hmm. And let's give let's us see. 30 seconds to get our thoughts in order regarding Olokun. Hmm. Uh, 
I'm thinking. I'm understanding. You should go retrieve your key from the lockers, but I'm retrieving my key. <laughs> Muscle stitch. And that's 30 seconds. Okay. Let's see. Erok, tell me what is Olokun? Uh, Olokun is an Orisha spirit in the Yoruba religion. Uh, it's not only in Western Africa, but there's also some elements in Cuba and Brazil. Mm. More detail mm. now or later. Uh, you know, tell me right now. I rule. I guess I should use they because they are uh, variously depicted as male, female, and androgynous. Uh, they are the ruler of all bodies of water and ruler of all other water deities. Well, mm. um, parent of Ahe is another one, who is the Orisha of great wealth and the bottom of the ocean. And they're known for being able to grant great wealth, prosperity, and health to their followers. I see. All right, Kale, tell me, what is Olokun? So, I mean, like, a, kind of like that, except not at all, <laughs> because it's a, it's like a, they described it as a supernatural slice of life anime about a spirit that, you know, is doing stuff. I didn't. I wasn't going over the plot. It's run for a couple seasons. It started last year. And, I mean, it's Japan only right now, but it uh, was based on a manga, as most things are. It's got a cutesy art style. The kind of stuff you'd expect. So it's only got... Uh, they say season three is in the works. But, mm. I mean, I don't watch it, so... All right, I have no idea about that one because I don't do anime <laughs> at all. <laughs> so... You could have said literally anything. I'd be like, all right, that sounds like an anime, <laughs> sure. Well, all it right. is. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it but could be. Then, yeah. All right, uh, Sagoto, what is this? Okay, so I know that everybody else has been saying that Olokun really sounds like it's a name of somebody, but it's not. Um, oh as you are well-versed, the southern parts of Japan, right, and all the little mm -hmm. street yep. and stuff like no, that. Very well have mascots for each of the individual towns to like celebrate and bring people out for festivals and those mm. sorts of things, whatever, right? So, so Olokun is one of the mascots from one of the, the small prefectures in the southern part. Of I see, yeah. Japanese mascots are fucking adorable. They are. Mascots are a big thing, yeah. Um, all right. I think I've, I'm starting to narrow it down a bit. Pig, what is it? It's gonna sound really boring after all of those. It's a not particularly interesting town near the Finland-Russia border. Mm -hmm. um, it it had a population of I can't remember the exact. Hi. Give me a second. It had a population at the last census, uh, which was okay. in two thousand and fifteen. Of I can't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around five thousand four hundred people. It's there's. Um, uh, there is apparently a very old, but now not particularly well-maintained chapel, and that's the only really interesting thing about it. Alright, I, th I think I've come to my decision. So actually, I, I didn't know anything about this, but after hearing the descriptions, I think I'm pretty certain I, I have heard this before. I believe it is the water deity. Are correct. Damn it. Right. Hey! I, I I feel like I've heard of something like that before, but like, it was in the back of my mind. Then I heard, oh, it's the water deal. I'm like, I know what that is. I've heard of that before. I'm surprised I, I need, it brought up I, in the dredge of my mind. I need to take a, a small moment here just to point out that the article I actually picked was about the big green egg, which are those like, um, grills that are made in Georgia or whatever. Right? But what is blowing my mind about this article more than anything is they have the sizes of the, the grills at the bottom. Oh. And the smallest one allows you to cook two chicken breasts and nothing else. Just two chicken breasts, right? Oh. Wow. The largest one can handle up to 14 to 16 whole chickens. Oh my god. My, what? <laughs> yeah. What? yeah. We're grilling tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, you either whole need chicken. a little bit of chicken or you need 16 chickens. So what? one thing I want to point out, obviously I did, like it wasn't chosen and I'm going to be choosing a new article. Uh, and we're going to get a new guesser, since that was Ben's second guess, right? Yep. So, yeah, I'm going to go next. Sure. 
I really wish you'd chosen my article just because I wanted everybody, I wanted to hear what lies people would come up with for Erwood Dingle. <laughs> <laughs> I got Gear Ludwig Eisen Uren, born twenty August 26, 1974, is a new country skier. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Um, so much fun to do with it sometimes when you have to just figure out what who is this person. Yeah. There's the big green egg. So, but like this chart is just amazing. The last one can handle <laughs> eighteen to twenty steaks. You know what the? Nice. No one needs that. How big is that grill? Twenty nine inch diameter. Apparently, I just looked at it. Also, That's right. Wow. I, I don't. I don't know if the person in row one has already deleted theirs. And I did. Okay, cool. Because you didn't do it completely, and I was wondering if someone's article was just G. <laughs> <laughs> G. Um, okay, so, Eric, you're guessing next? Cool. Let's, uh, we've got five minutes. Claim your rows and find your articles. Oh, I have my article pig. Oh. Oh. That's ominous. Yes, it is. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Oh, no. Perfect. He likes to cut G. <laughs> oh, I I just really need, I really need one of these articles to be about a legitimate tool used for breaking up wells. Nothing will make me happier. <laughs> See, I'm still working. I got that rule three thing. <laughs> you gotta have the callback. Well, this is a fun one. Oops. I've really been trying, but like in every tool used to build the well is just like the well drill. <laughs> oh, <that's not> <laughs> I know what I'm trying to do now. You're supposed to do random articles until the very last round when we yeah. discover the SCP that breaks wells. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm back. I do a step in for a second while I was saying hello to Malu. And they're ready. <gasps> Malu, Wade. Very exciting times. Pretty sure I'm saying Mel wrong, but that's okay. Is, isn't that Malu's name? I mean, it's, it's... like Ma Malu Ma 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 I always, I always say the last part wrong. Uh, I think it's Malu uh, Malamadu. Yeah, Malamadu. But I always Malu just I always just just call them Malu Wu because they've got the U right in their name. Right. Why wouldn't they have that if they didn't want to be Uwood? Mal U seven. I'm a very stressed man. About nothing in particular. Oh, just a heads up. Uh, I might need to take a short break at some point because I'm getting something delivered. That's okay. Uh, should be soon. And they did not notify me that the date would be changing. So. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good times. Good times. First they said be here yesterday, then they said tomorrow, then <laughs> now today. And I'm glad I'm here today, because otherwise... <laughs> Gotta love it. Your computer was dripping. That's all right. 
Yo, random thing real quick. I hate the drip meme. I don't I get it. I don't yeah. like it. Like, I get it. I don't like it. It's dumb. I feel the same way. Uh, like, I didn't have strong feelings towards the Shaggy meme, but I feel the same way how Barry described how he felt about the Shaggy meme, where it's like, he's strong. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, they're wearing, like, you know, fashion clothes. Get it? That's the joke, and I was like, "Great." But I, I, I have not seen the drip meme. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, hey, hey, I've described. Keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, they it's wear... it's it's the Among Us beans wearing fancy clothing. No, 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 no. It's spread from that. Oh. Now it's just anyone wearing that type of fashion. It's like a fashion. Line. Also, twenty seconds left. Okay, and then care they show people memes wearing them and it's like they have drip question mark exclamation point it's like they're shocked that they're wearing these clothes loss is the only I, meme that we need i mean it's the one that'll be preserved in the history books i like bongo cat but five bongo minutes cat is up. Also very good five yeah, minutes up good. so I remember when mega man went to real life so eric give us cho choose a row i rolled i rolled the d4 and rolled the four there we go. Oh, no. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight uh, highlight this for chat. Um, in the dead. Okay, there's nothing that's that's more three. below that. That's three. It's there is one. Is this the fourth row. That's the fourth row. Yes, that is the fourth row. Okay. Right, so tell me about. The, well, tell let's. Tell me about the quick and the dead in thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> in thirty seconds. <laughs> And there's your 30 seconds. All right. Uh, we're going to start with Pig. Uh, the Quick and the Dead is a satirical play um, about the life of a... Uh, not country and western. Um, a western film director by the name, uh, by the name of El uh, Albert Westbrook. Uh, I didn't follow anything more about him, uh, but apparently... Uh, apparently, after he died, um, a bunch of the people who had known him um, kind of read his autobiography and objected to it. And so they wrote, um, they they kind of co-wrote this satirical play, pointing out all uh, all the ways his life differed from the from his autobiography. Right. Uh, sorry. I, the quick and the dead. While it sounds like it might be a person's name, is in fact a collection of books, stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Cahill, Juice says, respect the drip, Karen. I was just responding to that. <laughs> That's the come only back. valid version of that meme. Uh, Ben. All right. Um. The Quick and the Dead is a documentary slash PSA about athletes and the dangers of performance enhancing drugs. Did you want more right now or? <laughs> we, can, if, uh, we can come back to that in a minute. Alrighty. Uh, and Cahill. The Quick and the Dead is a like comic midi series, kind of like a dark Western. And it was one of Mike Mignola, Mignola's Mignola's, I forget. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's the guy who made Hellboy. But it was one of his early works before he got started with things like Hellboy. Is so he Hellboy or the original Hellboy, the comic? The comic Hellboys. He's a comic artist. Got it. Um, so it, this was like one of his earliest works before he kind of moved on for the stuff he's more well known for. Okay. Uh, you kind of gave me all the detail I need on yours. Sure. Uh, so I, don't, I think I'm think i'm good on that but sorry what are the stories about all right um so there it's a collection right so i can read some of the titles if you want uh the fugitive the man in the cast 
the Quicken that is dead, the Sinless Vulture, uh, the Head of Cromwell, uh, um, the Tattooed Man, the Footsteps of Fear. Okay. One of those was the same as the title of the collection of the stories. Interesting. Well, that's what they do with Game of Thrones. Yep. And yeah, then, I, uh, I mean, it was made by, I, I didn't tell you who wrote it, uh, Arthur Vincent uh, Starrett, and this collection came out in 1965. Okay. Uh, ben, tell me more about the documentary. What is it? It's about athletes and PEDs and the dangers, but like, were there any specific people like, that we, that it brought up? Um, let's see. What was not like... There aren't really about a lot of uh, big recognizable athletes that were like especially uh, like shown. And also, one thing I need to bring up: thank God they didn't like show actual footage of uh, of like these incidents happening, because I uh, that that wouldn't be fun to watch. That'd be kind of really messed up. But uh, no, they showed like like local news stories, especially of like. Sometimes they'd show uh, like sort of like high school athletes trying to get ahead or college athletes, but uh, they showed like like not only deaths that happen, but like irreversible damages that these performance enhancing drugs have caused some of these athletes. So it's it's like more so a PSA than a documentary, actually. Now I think about it. Okay. Uh, and Cahill. It was a dark western. This comic miniseries is it just generic, or was there anything special about it? I mean, it was kind of generic. I mean, as you might expect, expect there were like some a little bit of supernatural elements, some stuff you might find in like you know the rest of his work. But for the most part, I mean, it's one, it's one of the reasons it's not you know his big breakout hit. It wasn't wasn't too like special in one way or another. Okay. Actually, kind of think these are all plausible. I think you're done. You've done pretty well on this one. Thank you. Uh, we smart. Also, Zaid says the quick and the dead is a nickname for Black Flash. No. Or <laughs> <laughs> Um. Thought, uh, I thought it was gonna be. I, th I my original thought I was gonna pick Ben. Then when there was a thing about any recognizable athletes or anything like that. Figured this might not be. That's not. I don't know if that's something they would make it. Doc, make that thing about. I'm gonna go with pig. Was I right? You were not. Um, okay. I do know that the phrase is associated with westerns. I'll be right back, real quick. Sure. Okay. I know that the phrase is associated with westerns, so I took advantage of that. But I don't actually know whose this is at all. Kind of cutting in you? and out a little bit. What? Yeah, me too. Uh, you're cutting so, in and out just a little bit. Um, me. Let me do. And just setting. Okay. okay. All right, I've returned. <sighs> Welcome back. Um, we're just waiting for. Uh, for Eric to choose to update his mic settings because he was cutting in and out just a little bit. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> Please come back, Eric. Uh, we love you. Yeah. Well, we can oh, hear no. you. You're still cutting out a little bit, but we can hear you. Oh, you, you, you can hear me again? Yes. yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I tried setting it to push to talk, and then no, you couldn't hear me at all. <laughs> oh. Did you push? That's not good. I was, yes. <laughs> Um, weird. Uh, I'll I'll work on that while you guys are doing the next round. But uh, sure, let's go with K Hill for this the next guess. Or no, I, I went. Oh, I was gonna guess Star. Next, sorry. Yeah, it is a collection of stories by Vincent Starrett. That is the correct answer. Okay. Honestly, I thought it was K Hills. I did my best. Yeah, you, you all did. You all did good work on that one. Those are all solid lies. And, I mean, also one solid truth, but, you know. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. 
let's let's clear these up and let's okay. And I'll start our five minutes as soon as everything's done here. Okay. Five minute timer. Go. Everybody, claim a row. That was Eric's first time guessing, right? Yes. I have one more. Okay, everybody claim a row and find a cool article. I try to fix my mic. I hope you managed to sort something out. I will never see it coming. Persona man. <laughs> looking cool, Joker. Looking, looking, looking cool, clown. That's what he actually says. Wow, Testing. Joker, you killed that enemy quick. Isn't there something like that that Morgana says all the time? Too? Testing, Probably. can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What? What? Oh, excuse me. Am I, Get am off I, my front lawn, kid! Am, am I still cutting in and out, or no? It sounds oh, better. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I can't hear, but that's just because I'm deaf. <laughs> I just kind of guess at what people are saying. Okay. Work on it like that. Oh no. Oh no, I have to choose this one. Good luck. No, it's not interesting. Anything you say. Ooh. Out Aww. there. That's a lie, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I try to be nice to my friends. Ouch. Listen, if Pig starts detailing how paint draws. I'm not going to pretend it's interesting. <laughs> we haven't done it yet, so... Yeah, I would listen to it. Okay, it, it's it's worth noting. Like, I don't know the details, but I know that for concrete, like, drying is far more complex than it seems to be. That's mm -hmm. very accurate. Because the whole process has to heat up and uh, generate additional... Yeah, concrete. which is why concrete can set underwater, because it's not drying. Yeah. Curing. Okay, got about two minutes left. My brain hurts. I believe in y'all. I believe in the you that believes in me. Oh, a quote. A reference of some kind. I believe in cuties, and they're all here. Uh, wow. Well, they're not all. Not all the cuties are here, but say, all the people here are, are cuties. No cuties. There are, are you saying there aren't any cuties in chat, Pig? I can't believe you. That counts as here. No. We're in Discord. Chat is in chat. Pig is canceled. Hungy, but I don't know what I'm hungry for. Mm. Have you considered food? Pizza. I'm looking at food right now. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza? Pizza. You can get bunger. Pizza. Bunger. 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 Just launch a bunger across the across America. Five minutes is a long time when you're. Oh god, I just realized. Oh. No. In the fresh air of Raz. 
fetish in the realm of Red Society is incredible. Correct, Juice. Bunger. Bunger? Bunger. Well, five minutes goes by a little faster, uh, since I have the GDQ going on in the background. I mean, there's also five, five seconds minutes. left, so, you know. There you go. Who's running and are they winning? Well, five, five minutes is up. Okay. Eric, time to choose you a random number. Uh, the die gave me a three this time, so we're going on row, we're going on row three. Oh. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow, we're on row three. Um, okay. 30, 30 seconds to get your thoughts in order, one way or another, regarding... Interesting. That. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> Kid Kenny Shigari, maybe? Uh, or Shigari? Time to memorize this article. Or am I? Well, that's 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, seriously. So, All Eric. Right. Well, we're gonna start with Cahill this time. Uh give me give me uh short descriptions. I'll come back and ask questions if I want. Okay, Katani Shiragari is a type of sushi that's made just in a it's specified just by like it's fish that's caught in the Bay of Japan. Like it's caught in a very certain localized place and prepared like that. So Oh no, Juice is gonna explode chat. They're oh, adding uh -oh. they're adding GDQ to the multi stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go with Ben next. We'll go, I'm going in reverse order from last time. Alright, it is a Japanese company that uh, works on producing photo lab equipment. All right, uh, Star. Uh, Kenny Shigari is a swing jazz band mm. with uh, punk influences. Interesting. Uh, Pig. Uh, Kateni Shigari is one of the oldest uh, Shinto shrines in southern Japan. I want, I want to hear more about the Swing Jazz Band. Me too. All right. Well, um, they were formed in 1997. Um, and their like major release um, was by the Epic Records label in 2004. And anything else? Did they do anything? Or is that like the... Or is it just kind of one of those bands that exists and no one really knows about them? Well, they're best known in the West for their opening theme to a Japanese series, uh, Komo Gumi. And then that translates to Adverner's Blue, I guess. As well as the opening theme to Rank Time. And that was really all the, there was in the article was, was those two sites of Western media. Alright. Um, hey, Hill. Anything else about the sushi? Other than the, the fish has to be caught in a specific spot? I mean, it, you know, mostly like certain kinds of fish, but that was a whole list, so I couldn't read all of them. Some kind of like deep sea koi, that kind of stuff. Other than that, that's about it. Localized Japanese sushi, basically. I don't, I didn't, I didn't know there were koi in the sea. Yes. I think koi is a freshwater fish, but all right. No. Um,. Ben, tell me about this lab equipment. All right, yeah. So, um, like I said, is a Japanese company that uh, produces a lot of photo lab equipment. Like they specifically more so focus on darkroom and like developing photos there. So they uh, they make some of the equipment. They also uh, produce and like export some of the chemicals used there as well. And uh, they also let's see, what was it they did film. Film casters, that was it, yeah. You can buy, like, let's see. 
Yeah, they do. Uh, they do. They do produce some of them for universities and stuff as well. But uh, let's see. Hey, what else did it say in this one? No, it didn't give me much else, sadly. All right. Uh, and pig, tell me about this shrine. Um. So as I said, it's it's one of the oldest uh, Shinto shrines in uh, in in southern Japan. It's not actually particularly big. Um, Just old. Yeah. So, um, but be because of its age, it's um, it's actually featured in uh, in several uh, in several animes. Um, but none of that I found particularly interesting. What I found most interesting is that in uh, I think they said eleven ninety or eleven ninety six. Uh, there was uh, there was a fairly major earthquake which destroyed most of the uh, most of the shrine. Um, the uh, however, the gate to the shrine um, remained completely undamaged, um, and so the the gate is now is now considered to be uh, to be a particularly holy gate. Okay. So let me let me ask one more question. Sure. Uh, you say it's one of the oldest Shinto shrines in southern Japan. When was it built? Um, they're not actually exactly sure um, where uh, when was uh, when was first built. Uh, the first reference to it in uh, in literature is uh, I th I think they said it was around uh, around eight hundred A.D. All right, I think that's I think that's all I need. Um, these are all also pretty good, and it's like it, it's clearly Japanese, and I don't know that much about various <laughs> obscure Japanese things. That's fair. Um, you know what? Just because I, I feel like this is too out of left field for it to be made up, I'm gonna go with SARS, the jazz band. You are correct. Wow. It is. Swing well done, Sar. It was formed in 1997. Yes. Major label of Epic Records in Japan in 2004. Best known for the US opening theme to Kazumuni Averner's Blue. Um, and then the, the lead trumpet player is named Kaz Takana. So. That's such a good name. <laughs> I, <laughs> wish, I wish I were named Kaz Takana. Claps. Right? And then he claps. Okay. So, on the leaderboards, then where am I at now? So, uh, Sar Sar is at two I'm points. Left. Remember, I'm you left. don't you don't get points for for not uh, not convincing. Um, right. So Sar is at two points. Um, ben and Cahill, I'm sorry to say, are at one point. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Pig is at three points. Of course. Um. You know, streamer cheats. Um, and Eric is at four points. Oh my god, these yeah. guys look amazing. Here, let me set, put this in the chat. I looked, I went to their uh, official yeah. website, and they're wearing like gangster outfits. I mean, they're swing bands, so it makes sense, right? But like, they look. Like but still, like mess you up. so it makes sense. Yeah. Ugh. Um. Okay, and Sar, are you ready to do some guessing? Oh my god, they look guessing. amazing. I'm ready to do some guessing. Are I'm you ready to do some guessing? I did last time. Cool. Okay. Uh, and Tsar? Tsar. I, yep. need, I need to say this because I was incredibly rude to you last time. A, oh, I'm yeah. sorry for how rude I was to you last time. And B, yeah. you, you choose exactly as you see fit. That can All be right, pure right, gut right, instinct right, if you want to. I'm Cause I'm, cause I'm tempted just to fuck with you again and just do like, let's just pick like all both times. Just mess with it. That is perfectly valid. <laughs> uh, okay. Everybody, claim a rogue. Okay, guess is 18. Who do you guess an 18 for me, John? Uh, so I guess I'm the one that's supposed to entertain chat now while all these people are looking up Wikipedia articles and claiming rogues and all that good stuff, right? So, sure. So, let's go find something to read on Wikipedia. I didn't do that when it was my turn, so sorry about that. You don't have to. Oh, sorry, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right, well, I found another article about uh, the equation. That seems notice. incredibly boring to read, so let's read it. <laughs> Cheem, how are you? WGOH. WGOH. 3070 AM is a radio station licensed to Grayson, Kentucky. WGOH broadcasts a full-service mix of classic country and bluegrass music. <laughs> the station serves Northeast Kentucky and is owned by Carter County Broadcasting Company Incorporated. WGOH features programming from CBS Radio and the Kentucky News Networks, as well as broadcast football and basketball games from both East Carter and West Carter High Schools. The station has won four National Crystal Radio Awards for its community service. That's why I thought like a radio station might be funny because like <laughs> there's like so little details, but also it could be anything. You know what I mean? One of the ones I found was like weirdly sparse for being about a person. <laughs> you 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 get those where it's just like he was a dude. I don't know what more you want. Person. Yeah, this one here. Uh, John Michael Rennenbach, born September 14th, 1961 in Fort Mede, Maryland, is a former American football linebacker who played eight seasons in the National Football League, mainly with the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's oh, hey. it. That's the entire <laughs> article. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Is everything okay? <laughs> How do I keep finding radio stations? <laughs> Great work. Great work. Sorry. KBS Cool FM. <clears throat> KBS Cool. I'm sorry. KBS Cool FM, known as KBS 2 FM, is a 24 hour hot AC music radio station for the Korean broadcasting system. It plays mostly older K pop music from the 90s compared to KBS Happy FM, which plays the latest K pop tracks. Notable latest shows K-pop. include. Popular Plaza, Volume Up, and Kiss the Radio. Who? That's unsanitary. (laughs) In our modern age? In this modern time? Uh, All right, let me show my box myself here. Let me check that. All right, I did order Fox yourself. It'll be here. Nice. Like half an hour. So, got plenty of time. I'd be tired. I'm a turd. Yeah, I decided on some Chinese. It's time for sleep soon, Cahill? Oh, it's time for it's time for Cato. Oh, also, apparently, I'm going into work tomorrow. So that blows. I mean, what? me too, except for the going in part. Yeah, I'll be working tomorrow, but I'll be doing it remotely. Nope, I have to go to a place. They're they're like we're closed, and then they're like, "Do you want to come in on Monday?" And I was like, "Sure." So I don't even know how long I'll be there. I might be there three hours. I might be there till fucking one o'clock. Cam is calling me old in my chat, and I can't even complain because he used channel points to do it. I mean, I'm I'm halfway to seventy. Oh no, we're halfway yeah, well, there. Oh, oh, ah, oh. my ears. <laughs> no. Lisa Borders is born in Atlanta, Georgia. She attended Atlanta Public Schools and later the Westminster Schools in 1965 after her parents wanted a more academically challenging environment for her. At Westminster, she was one of seven African-American students on campus. The fellow students were often hostile. Borders is the granddaughter of the civil rights leader, Reverend William Holmes Borders, pastor of Atlanta's Beat Street Baptist Church. Borders obtained a bachelor's degree from the Duke University and a Master of Science in Health Administration at the Co- University of Colorado. She served on the Duke University Board of Trustees. As an undergraduate, she joined Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. It's also no well known that she created a device that was really good at destroying walls. <gasps> there's your, there's a, your true well, a true <laughs> well invented. There's, there's your rule of three. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thing. <laughs> you really did it. I made it happen. That's five minutes. That's five minutes. All right, um, I'm going to go with number two, please. Okay. Let's just highlight that for everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And we have cool. 30 seconds to put our thoughts in order, one way or another, regarding Icebreaker. 
which it's worth noting appears to be in italics. It's a drill. It breaks wells. <laughs> <laughs> despite despite the name, breaks wells. <coughs> Wall breaker was already copyrighted. Will Breaker the wrestler would not let them. And there's your 30 seconds. Okay. All right, All right Pig, what do you got? Um, Icebreaker is a uh, is a novel written by shit. I can't remember the name. Um, I think it was. Shit, I forgot <laughs> the name. Uh, I it was James something. I think it's it, it's it's notable for being. Uh, for being a novel with James Bond, not written by Ian Fleming. Are you saying it's a James Bond novel? It's a James Bond novel, but not by Ian Fleming. Hmm. Uh, do you want more detail? Not at this moment. Thank you okay. very much. All right, Eric. What do you got? Uh, Icebreaker is a 2000 film starring Matthew McConaughey. About people going up to the Arctic to rescue some scientists who've been trapped on the ice in a storm. All right, all right, all right. That was great. Smooth ride of a winky top All right, Kel, what do you got? Okay. So it is a film. It was released in about 2015. Well, I mean, it was released in 2015. <laughs> it was an independent film released in 2015. It was a documentary made by um made to highlight you know the kind of toxic pickup guy culture you know that kind of talking about mm. uh, but yeah toxic pickup artist kind of culture and it was highlighting it on one specific campus and kind of like the bar surrounding it all right all right all no right. you can't do it twice i didn't <laughs> i didn't mention the matthew mans all right ben you're up all right um Icebreaker is a board game where you need to, uh, what was it again? It was a weird way of phrasing it in the article itself. Um, yeah, it's one where it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like Jenga, except you have to break ice pieces off of it. And, uh, what was it again? Oh. Hmm. Mm. No, 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 no. It's your job to remember. Yeah, it was a weird mechanic where, like, uh, you had to, you had to slide, like, you had to slide this one piece to the end, but if the ice... Hold on. Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted right now. Something came up. It's fair. Yeah, yeah, you need to slide the piece to the end of the board, but if the ice is broken along the way, then, uh, then you lose. You lose the round. Okay. So, ju ju just quickly. Sorry. I know you didn't ask for more details, but I need to give you one detail. It's very important that you know that the villain of, I of Icebreaker is Count Conrad von Gloda. <gasps> it's just, it's the best fucking villain name. It's so over the top. Sounds awesome. It's a good name. I agree. All right, so a good um, fake name, Kel. Yes. What else you got? What else I got? I mean, it was filmed in um, what is it? Ma it was filmed in a Massachusetts college. It didn't specify which. Um, and premiered at a film festival near there. Uh, obviously they were going for film. Uh, All right. So so here's the deal, Ben. Mm -hmm. I was really believing yours because there's actually a game called Break the Ice, which is mm. somewhat like Jenga type puzzles and stuff like that, whatever, right? And when you were first talking about it, I thought that's what you're talking about until you talk about sliding across the ice. So I don't think it's yours. And then Iraq, Matthew McConaughey doesn't do anything except for Lincoln Hamilton during his own commercials. <laughs> My thing is broken. So I don't think it's yours. <laughs> but really, I think it comes down to the college pickup one because like Icebreaker does seem like it would be a very edgy like documentary name whatever like that about trying to like get to the like corruption behind like pickup artists and stuff like that especially on like college campuses and things right but like pig let's give it to you for that amazing villain name if you made it up on your own 
Fucking, I wish I could make up Count Conrad he von Gloda. He used the specific great name. <laughs> <laughs> Unfair. I was, gonna go, I was gonna go back to Pig just to say hey, any other details about the. <laughs> I the thing is I I thought you were going to like choose right there and I'm like no I need to say this You should have said it afterwards <laughs> basically bribed him <laughs> It was the first one I thought of when I needed an actor Oh it was fine it's fine I That's love fair. him He's in a lot of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you got that amazing like scene with Wolf of Wall Street where he's like mm -hmm. Also Sargoda only has one more round right uh, correct. He has been guesser once. Okay. Well, in that case, is it going to be cool if I hop off after his round is done? Uh, you know what? I, I think we can, like, call stream then. I was going to say, oh, okay. I, I, I need to leave in, like, 20 minutes anyway, so that would yeah. be a good time. Ending time for me as well, because my food will be getting here. So. Yeah. Okay. So then we... Jack can watch me eat some Chinese food. Hell yeah. We, we do one more round. I raid Sar. Sounds like a good time. We... Uh... Maybe. Better not. No, I mean, I'll do what I want. I might. All right. I might also so raid someone else. Uh, I mean, you can raid whoever you want. World Rugby Under 20 Championship. Anyway, World you have five Rugby minutes. Claim a row. Known as the IRB Junior World Championship until 2014, is an mm -hmm. international rugby union competition. The event is organized by the sport's governing body. World Rugby's Rugby is a fake sport. And is contested by 12 minutes. <laughs> with an age or 20 age requirement. The event replaced the IBR's former age grade world championship. Made it up after football got invented. The under 19 and under 21 world champion. Why would you have an under 19 and an under 21? That seems. You oh my god. You're competing in the under 21, right? Like. The inaugural tournament was held in June 2008, hosted by Wales, and with 16 teams participating, Wales was announced as the host for the inaugural Chat! Tournament. You, you, you all can't see this, so that's fine. But chat, I have to, right? I fucking have to. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> well, I'm glad I streamed this since I can't stream too tomorrow. too good! Oh. I agree, Pick. American football isn't <laughs> real football. Is made because people want to rugby, but they are too scared. I mean, that's also one another another interpretation of it. Because freaking real Wait. football is soccer. I didn't come in. I'm more than happy to talk about that, Paula. Mm. It's fine. <laughs> hey, Luca. No topic that's too extreme for me. Uh, let's see. Let's find another article. That one was annoying and boring. Never. Ah, here we go. You guys want to hear about Pope Pius the Eleventh and Judaism? Uh, you know what? Why not? Uh, probably. Uh, this is a bad idea. I was kind of hoping all of you would say no, but <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a bad idea. The relations between Pope Pius the Eleventh and Judaism during his reign from 1922 to 1939 are generally regarded as good. Okay, good. We'll end the article. <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> worked out for all of us we dodged a bullet i remember the last time i was playing this i got like one of like the the like super like science nazis or whatever like that and i'm like i don't no. know yeah occasionally, occasionally you'll get that and it's just like i i i don't want to talk about this yeah. let's let, let let's not talk about war criminals please right war criminals are war criminals are not pogger chat <laughs> Better believe that. Better believe it. If someone tries to do war in a criminal way, that's no good. Juice has started a, a prediction. Uh oh. About whether or not I'll <laughs> win, I will. <laughs> How do I find a random article on Wikipedia? Uh, you click random article. Also, I do uh, want to apologize for that last round. I was, <laughs> I didn't do well because I was distracted with uh, the package coming in. I need to work on a few things. Didn't have a lot of time. Oh, you're fine. You have to go in there for, for chat, half of your thing. Chat, vote. Vote if we'll be seeing this one. Gamble, you fools. 
gamble your life away as I once did. <laughs> Neither can I, Juice. Hank. Go back to yesterday. What were some significant things that happened on my birth uh, day? Uh, gambling. Well, I know what happened to Euro. <laughs> Old stuff because apparently you're old. Got him. Got him. Got him. What, what, what the heck is this? Mods can't, can't vote in predictions? No, they can't because they can. Can dealers mark. gamble yeah, they in mark Vegas? The They can say which way the vote actually, or whatever happened, happened, right? So I know. Mm. Rigged. 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 That I All mean, that's fair. Here. My life's been rigged. The truth is, the game is rigged from the start. Mm -hmm. It truly really is an unjust game. You're all, the winning are almost done. So I'm mean, too. If my voice is reaching you. Uh, that is the five minute mark. Hooray! Let's go with number two again. Okay. Um, let's highlight that for chat. And it's Starkweather School. Mm. Let us have 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to prepare yourselves for the uncomfortableness that's about to follow. I'm always uncomfortable. Ooh, three crosses. And that's 30 seconds. Okay. All right, Ben, since you're having issues and stuff, why don't you go first again? Yep, absolutely. So, uh, Starkweather School is a boarding school in England and uh, is very notable for having uh, for having graduate students of... Uh, it's, let, let, let me rephrase that. It had uh, some graduate students, six of which won Olympic medals. Ooh. All right, let's do uh, Cal next. Okay. The Dark Weather School is actually a university in Oregon, which is um, it's an institute set up to study weather conditions and train scientists who are studying that specific field. Right. Hey. Uh, Starkweather School is a fictional school um, from a comic book series of the same name. I say series, it, it apparently only had two issues. It was incredibly unsuccessful. It was independently published, poised as something of a competitor to, um, to the X-Men, but never really did anything. Starkweather School is a school building in Plymouth, Michigan, named after George Anson Starkweather, who was a pioneer of Plymouth, Michigan, and a teacher there. They built it in 1927 when the local school district was getting too big. Uh, it's on the national list of historic places. It was added in 2016. Uh, it is currently closed, and they are the building has been sold, and developers plan on turning it into loft spaces. Which I don't know how they can do, considering it's on the national list of historic places, but apparently they can. Why did it take so long to get on the list of historic places? It doesn't say in the article. Okay. <laughs> Dang it. These are all pretty good. <laughs> hmm. now let's go down the list one more time. Ben, anything else interesting to say about yours? Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, let's see. As an all-boys school, like I said, uh, produced a few Olympic medalists. And uh, let's see. 
It was founded in the 1800s. Let's see. Hey, what what else? What else was it? Yeah, it's uh, still running to this day. And uh, what else? What else do they produce? I mean, wow, produce. <laughs> what else do the graduates do? Let's see. Uh, oh, it also had some Academy Award winners as well. Okay. So you know, oh, pretty cool. eventful things from that school. So, uh, Cal Hill, did you ever hear about Pig's comic book series that only ran two and was trying to go up against one of the longest running comic books like ever? No, not really. All right, and what about yours? <laughs> your your school in Oregon that's weather related. <laughs> I mean, it's notable because it's like it's in a. I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> it's in a mountain range. It has a large. You know what a Doppler radar is, right? It has a large array of those for studying the weather conditions and storms up in Oregon. And yeah, that's about it. Got it. Okay. And uh, Pig, any additional details about your X Men comic? That's not an X Men comic. Um. So, part of the reason for the name is that all uh, all of the kids being trained there have. To some extent, weather-related powers. So that's why it's Stark Weather School. Um, I I believe there there was there's only one who who, who I remember um, who is a character called Snow who can control snow. So you know sterling creativity on display. Yep. Something like Jack Kirby would have put together. Right? I mean, all right, um, Iraq. I think it's you. You are correct. Oh, okay. Okay. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't pick mine because it's just really boring. <laughs> <laughs> this is really typical. Um, I you literally just the, school the, the only thing that concerned me was like for it to be on like a list of historic sites, but like be from Plymouth. Yeah. Like that's so Plymouth. Sixteen. I'm like, mm, everything else was like, okay, this seems good. This seems okay, good. so I'm uh, so sad you didn't choose mine because yeah, I. What are you doing? I needed everyone to lie about Blunk. Blunk. Because, God, it's so amazing. <laughs> okay, then. Um, the, yeah, it was just, it's just the building. It's apparently one of the only ones left from that time, I guess, which is why yeah. it's on the hard mm. places or whatever. But there's a whole section, like four, three or four paragraphs in this thing about the design of the building. Interesting. Like the... the it was entirely too much detail. That's really interesting. So what what I know about historic sites, and I'm not an expert on this topic, so please don't like take what I'm saying for like whatever. But you're allowed to renovate them to be other things or do other things and stuff like that, whatever, as long as the facing of the structure typically is kept uh, intact, right? Yeah, so I think you're that. right. Oh, okay, so you, I didn't know. I didn't know that. So you could basically like gut it in the inside and change any of the layout on the inside you want, as long as the external portions are maintained um there, there are there are some there's like another category above above historic building where you can't change anything yeah but that's like a whole different thing uh, okay the the only other thing notable about it i guess is the architects have like their own wikipedia article oh and take them them, i see i don't know anything about them they're apparently just some michigan architects cool well this was rad thank you so much for joining me guys Mm -hmm. Um, so, so... Who won? Who won? Who won? Who won? The no score, point. the score is at the end. Yeah, Rock. Ben and Cahill tied for one point. I'm so sorry. That's cool. I'm on the board, though, at least. True. Pig yeah, and it. Sar tied at four points. And Eric at five points. Jeez, oh. five. Great job. So, Eric, very, very well done. Time to raid you me i mean you won that's what you get uh no i, I think i'm gonna rate chan yeah, i i would i would not place i'm gonna just stop me. my stream so. <laughs> goodbye your stream but yes that was super fun thank you guys so much for joining me no problem to, yeah. good play. and i would like to do this again sometime I'm putting up good. Good. down if I have time. This is fun. Put, putting up with the well of my jokes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that was so good. I did that a second time for something it clearly just wasn't for. That was so funny. Th that, that's the thing. The first time it was a lie. The second time was beauty. It was art.
had to keep the voice straight the whole time. So that, that's that's the, the thing. Good. I don't know how you didn't crack it. Mm, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, you guys have yourself a great night. Thank you. Cool. You too. You too. See yeah, ya. I got skedaddle, so uh, bye. bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Uh, so yeah, chat, thanks for joining me. I know this is a very different kind of stream. I'm not going to do these all the time because... Screen. Um, because they're... I, I... It's difficult to interact with chat, whatever. It's a little unusual. I still love doing this. I'm glad you guys seem to have enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to raid Chen because he's a good lad and always deserves the raid. Um... So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you're all going to have a wonderful day going forward because you truly deserve it. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I'll be live again on Wednesday, 5.30 Eastern, where I'm continuing with uh, Shining Force, which continues to be so much fun, so much great nostalgia there. Um, next week, Sunday... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing yet. I've got, I've got two possibilities, and I will, I'll decide. Uh, I'll probably do a poll in my Discord to figure out which one, which one I'm doing. I'm very excited about it. Um, but yeah, uh, say say hi to Chen for me. I think our raid message should simply should simply be blunk, um, because frankly, if we're gonna <laughs> confuse him, we're gonna confuse him properly. Actually, no, Juice is right. Mablunky. Mablunky is our great message. So, when you get over there, hit Chen with all the Mablunky you've got. Confuse the heck out of him. I hope you all have a lovely day going forward. Ciao.